Okay, let's start by doing some review. Um, how do we say how old are you? Um, there's one that I keep forgetting. Is it um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Begins with Kem. Oh, Kem Amruka. Very good, Kem Amruka. How do we say God willing? Um, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Do you speak English? Um, well, I know that part of it is Aloha Inglesia. El Inglesia, good. Hal mm -hmm. Tatikelum Eloha El Inglesia to a male. Hal Tatikelum. Hal Tetikelamina eloka el inglesia to a female. Try both of those. First, hal tetikelam eloka el inglesia. Hal tetikelam eloka el inglesia. Good. And hal tetikelamina eloka el inglesia. Hal tetikelamina eloka el inglesia. Very good. Excellent. Okay, how do we say I am from America? Um, hmm. It's like, does it have Enta America in it? Enta is you. How do we say I? Oh, I don't know why I thought Wa was you. Um, no, Wa is and. Wa. But enta means oh. you. How do we say I? Um. Run a blank. Don't remember? Okay. Ana means I. Ana. Okay. Okay. And min amrika means from America. Ana min amrika. Try that. Ana min amrika. Very good. Hi, Elise. How are you? Glad you could join us. Um, thank you. <laughs> and I'll be here. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> A lot of turmoil in the kingdom these days. <laughs> A little scary. Oh, I know. No. Oh, I hope it stays calm. Are you yeah. on the um, American Embassy list for announcements? Oh, you know, not to make any sweeping political movements, but I'm on God's list. And you know what? If it's my time, it's my time. And if not, it's going to be an exciting ride. Uh, I kind of like to know what's going on, but <laughs> anyway. I try not to worry more than necessary, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, it seems like, like last night there was a press conference. So last night it seemed like, like things are getting back to normal a little bit. They're doing a great job. Oh. At, um, getting up and running is really quite incredible, but I don't, stays calm. I don't think it'll be the last. I mean, I think yeah. that they just I'm afraid not. they just gave their welcome greeting, and yeah. I don't think it'll definitely won't be the last. But yeah, unfortunately. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do the next one for me. Um, Elise, how do we say good morning? Sabah al hair. Mm -hmm. Very good. Clayton, you're welcome. Have fun. Elise, until our next meeting. Ila ala call. Very good. Clayton, I don't understand. I find it so ironic that I never remember this one. <laughs> How do we say Anna I? How do we say I? Remember I? Anna. Anna. Mm -hmm. And la is how we negate in the present tense. So Anna, la, and how does we say understand? Well, that's kind of the kicker. <laughs> Elise, how do we say I don't understand? Anna, la, efem. Anna, la, efem. Anna, la, efem. I don't understand. Just like that. Anna, la, efem. Here, la doesn't mean no. Here, it's actually negation of efem. So if you say efem, you're saying, I understand, but la of means I don't understand. 
Okay. Clayton, how old are you? Oh, I'm sorry, how are you? Um, okay, for Haluka. Mm -hmm, good. Elise, hello, hello. Mahabtain. Clayton and upon you peace. Um wa alaikum as salam. Very good. Or as salam. Uh-huh. As salam. Mm -hmm. Elise Shukra. Oh, Shukra. <laughs> okay. All right. How do we say I'm pleased to meet you? Um Tasharafna. Very good. Um, Clayton, how do we say yes? Nam. Nam. Mm -hmm. Elise, welcome to you. Ahlan wa sahlan. And the reply to that would be? Uh, ahlan bika or Great. ahlan biki. Excellent. Okay, Clayton, where do you live? Um, is Waina Anti where are you from? Or Waina Anta? Um, I'm in Anta, where are you from? Where do okay. you live? Um, hmm, I don't know. Elise, where do you live? Aina Tescuna. Aina Tescuna. Aina Tescuna. To a female, Aina it would be? Aina Tescunina. Aina Tescunina. Okay, Aina Tescuna or Aina Tescunu or Aina Tescunina. Okay. Where do you live? Okay, Clayton, how do we say good night? Um, oh, I don't know. Good night, Elise. Well, this one I forgot as well. Tispa, Tispa O'Hare. Tispa alahir, tispa alahir, okay. or to a female, tispahina alahir. Tispa what's alahir. the one? What's the one that uses the word nur in it? Um, sabah nur, sabah nur, or masa nur. Um, okay, and reply. is that a reply? It's okay. A reply. Mm -hmm. Okay, but to say good night to a male, it's tispa alahir, and to a female. Tisbahina al Okay. Okay. Um, Clayton, how do you say my name is? It's me. Mm -hmm. Elise, good afternoon or good evening? Misa al Khair. Misa al Khair, very good. Clayton, how do we say no? La. Mm -hmm. And Elise, how do you say I speak Arabic? Uh, Anna, how do you have it? Let me think. Anna Tatakalim Aloha Arabia? Really close. Anna Etikalim Aloha Arabia. Etikalim, it's the verb conjugated for Anna. Starts with an mm -hmm. alum. Anna Etikalim Aloha Arabia. Very good, though. Well, it's, that's good to know. <laughs> Um, like, real quick, uh -huh. I wanted to write down like good morning, good evening, and good night. Okay. So, Sabah al hair is Sabah al hair. Sabah al hair. Sabah al hair. Uh huh. It was good morning. Masa okay. al hair. Masa al hair is good afternoon or good evening. Masa al hair. And good night is tisba ala khair. Tisba ala khair. Or to a female, tisbahina ala khair. All right. Okay. Elise, um, how do we ask what's your name? Ma'asmak. Uh, or my smoky. Good. My smoky, my smoky. Um, Clayton, how do we say please? 
Shukran. That's thank you. No, that's Please thank you. Um, uh, is it two words? Mm -hmm. First one's men. Um, yeah, At least, how do we say please? Min fudlika. Min fudlika. Or min fudlika. Or min fudlika. Very good. Min fudlika or min fudlika. Okay. Clayton, how do we ask where are you from? Um, why are you not into? Min ena enta. Min ena enta. Min ena What does wa mean? Is a that even wa a thing? means yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Wait. <laughs> wa means and. What? <laughs> wa means oh, and. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so min, min means from. Ena, where. And enta means you. Okay. So we say min ena enta for a male or Min ena enti for a female. Okay. 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 Elise, how do we say fine? Praise to God. Bihair. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Clayton, how do we say goodbye? Um. I promise I actually know this one. It's just so early. <laughs> Elise, how do we say good goodbye? Ma salama. Ma salama. Very good. See, I knew that. <laughs> it just. <laughs> okay, Clayton, how do we say um, hello? Marhaba or marhaban. Good, marhaba. And Elise, how do we say peace be upon you? Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Very good. Okay, we're going to practice our dialogues. Um, Elise, you're going to be student A, and Clayton, you're going to be student B. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan biki. Kefa haluka. Be here. Alhamdulillah. Wa anti. Anna be here. Shukran. Ma smuka. Yes, me. Clayton. Wa ma smuki anti. Yes, me, Elise. Oh, where am I? Here. Student A. Yes, me, Elise. Tasharafna. Tasharafna be here. Right, right. Ila alaka. Ma salama. Very good. Okay, this time switch. So Clayton, you're gonna be student A, and Elise, you'll be student B. Okay. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan bik, ahlan bika. Kaif pa haluki. Bihair, alhamdulillah. Wa anta. Ana bihair, shukran. Mai smuki. Esmi Elise. Wama Esmuka Enta Esmi Clayton Tosharafna Tosharafna Bika Ila Alaka Ma Salama. Very Are you going to try to get at least to sing the song with you today? <laughs> <laughs> did you try to sing it? <laughs> I did. Like, I could not stop hearing it in my head for hours. And then, <laughs> That's a good thing. It's a, a very good song. It really like like does the the trick. It really helps you. Learn yeah, I mean, it does it. its job. It does. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't drive you crazy, birds. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go on to conversation two. And Elise, you're gonna be student A, and Clayton, you're gonna be student B. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Kefa haluka. Mumtaz, alhamdulillah. Wa kaifa haluki anti? Kwaisa. 
My Smoky. Esme Elise. Well, my Smoka enter. Esme Clayton. Tasharafta. Tasharafta Bika. Ila Alaka. Ma Salama. Very good. Okay, this time switch. So, Clayton, you're going to start. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Kaitha Haluki. Mumtaza, alhamdulillah. Wa kaitha haluka enta. Kwais, alhamdulillah. Ma aswuka. Esmi Clayton. Wa ma aswuki enti. Esmi Elise. Tasharafna. Um, Nabiki, Ila Alaka. Ma Salama. Very good. We'll just do a quick um, letter review of the alphabet in the isolated positions. <sighs> <laughs> Try this again. I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> when you're online, it's like just a short delay. Just seems like it's forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the bad thing. I thought I said at the beginning. Here we go. Okay. Do a lot of people show up to the Tuesday Thursday meetings? Um, a couple do. Yeah, not a lot. I was pretty sure we had a decent amount of people in the class. We, we just... do actually. A lot of them are just doing it without coming to um the the classes, which I really don't recommend. Um, it 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 is an option, but I don't recommend it. I mean, okay. I would not do very well. Yeah, it's really better to um to like force yourself to to come to class. Hopefully, it's not a bad thing. Yeah. You can sing and and color with crayons and do all kinds of fun stuff. So, <laughs> and and look at pretty, pretty pictures and draw and write. So it's I don't think it's it's right. Yeah, but they're missing out on that. Okay, Elise, what letter do we have? Fa. Good. Clayton? Bah. Good. Woo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At least. Thou. Mm -hmm. Clayton? Seen. Good. At least. Um, that is Tamarbuta. Good. Tamarbuta. And Clayton, what's the purpose of Tamarbuta? Uh, usually you put it at the end of the word to make it like feminine. Good, exactly. Okay, Elise. Noon. 
-hmm. Clayton? Fine. Good. Elise? Fair. Good. <laughs> Saw that one before. Okay. Um, Clayton? Alice. Mm -hmm. Elise? Ta. Good. Clayton? Ooh, this one's familiar as well. Uh, ba. Good. Elise? Dob. Very good. Clayton? Um, is that sod? Sod, very good. Elise? Y yeah. Yeah, very good. Clayton? Oh, um, um, I know this one. I don't know this one. Elise? I do know this one. Hamza? Hamza. This one's Hamza. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Clayton? Cough. Very good. Elise? Um, is it Ma? Mean. 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 <laughs> Clayton? Da. Mm -hmm. Very good, Da. Elise? Um, da? Da. 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 Clayton? Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Elise? That is. Um, Aleph Maxora. Aleph Maxora, very good. Clayton. Jean. Mm -hmm. Elise. Ha. Ha, very good. Clayton. Um. Calf. Very good. Elise. Ha. Ha, good. Clayton? Um, Ra. Very but good. yo, does somebody have a cat? I do. Oh. <laughs> I'm in here I on love the cats. <laughs> okay, Elise? Fine. Very good. Clayton? Um, Sheen. Very good. Elise? Zay. Mm -hmm. Clayton? Ta. Okay. Elise? Uh, ha. Ha, good. Lab. Lam, good. Elise? Um. Dog? Dale. 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 Okay, good job. Okay, we're going to go over the, the lesson for this week. And so, Clayton, you, you've seen this, so it'll be a little bit of a review for you. Um, looking at... Uh, it doesn't mean much, don't worry. Was, <laughs> we'll do a little bit more, too. We'll keep you engaged. Actually, maybe that's not true. Because <laughs> if it's the letter sounds, I got this down pat. <laughs> oh, you can sing it for us. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Not that no? much. But <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So just a quick review of the short and long vowels. And then we'll go on to the other sounds in Arabic. Okay, so our short vowels, there are three of them, and they're typically not written. They're written either above or below the line when they are written, but you typically only see them, for instance, in the Quran or in grade school textbooks. So 
but for the most part, um, you really don't see the short vowels written. You just have to know what they are and know how to pronounce words, okay? Um, so the first one is a, a slash mark that goes above the word, above the line and above the word, and it's called feta, feta. Feta makes the ah sound, feta. Our second vowel sound is kesra, kesra. And kesra looks just like feta, but it goes below the line, feta. And it makes the e sound. So we have a, e. And the last one that we have is dhamma, dhamma. And dhamma makes the u sound. It looks like the letter wow, but it's small and it's just written above the word, above the letter that you want that u sound to, to go with it. Okay. So we have feta, kesra, and dhamma. Feta makes the a ah sound, kesra makes the e sound, and dhamma makes the u sound. Does the little w looking thing mean for like a double sounding for the letter? Yes. Like for the m m m. And we're going to talk okay. about that today. That's called shedda. 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 Mm -hmm. So those were our, our short vowels. Now we have the long vowels. The long vowels are just like the short vowels, except they're longer in length. Okay, so our first one is Aleph. Aleph makes the ah sound. So um, Feta makes ah, and Aleph makes ah longer. Okay, and our next one is ye, and it makes the e sound. So it's just like, like Kesra, only longer. Okay, the letter ya. Yeah. And aleph, ya, yeah, and wow will always be written. They're actually part of the word itself. Okay, so those will always be there to help you pronounce it. Okay, and our third one is wow. And that's the regular letter wow. And it's written as part of the word. And it makes the oo sound. Oo. So we have a, e, oo. Okay, in addition to the vowels, we also have, oh, and here's that song that Clayton was talking about that Elise, you wanna make sure and sing <laughs> several times. <laughs> Just listen to oh it, my. it's really fun. Um, it helps you learn the letters with the vowels, okay? So um, make sure and listen to it several times and sing along with it and it will really help you, okay? So um, next thing I wanna talk about are the diphthongs. There are two diphthongs in Arabic and what they are are um, like a, a vowel sound consisting of two different parts. Okay, so for example, our two diphthongs are um, an aleph with a ya after it makes the a sound. Aleph, ya, makes the A sound. And Aleph and Wow, Aleph and Wow makes the O sound. So we have A and O, okay? In addition to the regular vowels. So these are vowels, they, they change um, because these letters are next to each other. So the Aleph and the Ya makes the A sound, the Aleph and the Wow makes the O sound. So you have those in addition to. I have a question. Uh-huh. So you know how we have like the word min? Mm -hmm. Is there not a vowel in there to make the I sound or um, how does that there work? There is, but it's not written. It's one of those short vowels. So you'll see that a lot. You'll see words written in Arabic and they'll look like just like a bunch of consonants because the short vowels aren't written. And that's, that's why when you learn a word, you have to learn it, um, look at it, and then just learn how to pronounce it because you can't always know how to pronounce it. And in fact, the word min, meme, and noon um, can also be men, which means who. So typically like in a, in a paragraph or a sentence, 
your, um, when you look at it, the only way you're going to know how to pronounce it, if you pronounce it min or you pronounce it men, depends on its context in the sentence. So that's what makes Arabic a little bit complicated um, because you have to really know not only the word itself and how to read it, but you have to know the grammar of the word and the grammar of the sentence to be able to know what a particular word is and how to pronounce it. Um, yesterday we That's were actually kind of like Japanese. About, yeah, possibly. Yeah, um, we were talking about how, um, like, with a, a like the letters dal, ra, and seen can be pronounced two different ways. You can, you can pronounce dal, ra, and seen as a verb, and it would be darasa, darasa. But if you put, um, if you want to pronounce it as a noun. You have munition on the end. It's pronounced darson, darson. Exactly the same, the same word, um, just unvowled ver versus um, different voweling. One is a noun, one is a verb. So um, it's important okay. to learn the grammar along with the actual letters themselves. You need, you need both in Arabic. You can't, you can't avoid it. So grammar is really important in the Arabic language. You want to watch that short video about connecting letters. Okay, our next thing that we want to talk about today are some other signs that you get. And you'll see these in your um, Gateway to Arabic book. Okay, so we have sukun. Sukun is just like a little circle and it goes over a letter, okay, on top of a letter. And what a sukun does is to um, have like no added vowel on a particular word, on a particular letter, okay? So I'll show you um, a little bit, after we get through this page, I'll show you some examples of, of how sukun is used. But a sukun over a letter means that there's no added vowel on that particular letter. Okay, so you kind of stop on that letter. Okay, our next one is shedda. And shedda, you saw that earlier, um, doubles the sound that a particular letter makes. So when you see a shedda over a letter, it doubles the sound of that letter. Okay, so that's the purpose of shedda. Okay, the next thing that we want to talk about is tenween. And tenween is um, a vowel marker. It's actually a double vowel marker. Okay, so we've seen the short vowels. Clayton, what are the names of the short vowels? Do you remember the names? What? The names of the short vowels. Oh, um, <laughs> feta, kestra, and dhamma. Good. Feta, kestra, and dhamma. If you double those, so you'll have two slash marks above the line or two slash marks below the line or two little wows above the line, okay? Um, it's called ten ween, ten ween, or in English, sometimes it's referred to as new nation, new nation. And what it indicates is that a word is indefinite, okay? There is no word for a or an in the Arabic language. So like in English, we say an apple, okay, or a boat, okay? There is no word that corresponds to that in the Arabic language. Um, what they do to indicate that is the use of ten ween at the end of that word. So when you see a double vowel marker at the end of a noun, um, it's going to be pronounced depending on um, which, which vowel is doubled. Okay, if it's a double dhamma, it's going to be pronounced un. If it's a double kesra, it's going to be pronounced in. And a double fetha, it's going to be pronounced on. Okay, so un, in, or on. Now, the difference between those has to do with the grammar of the sentence. Okay, so it's where that particular word is found within the sentence structure. So for instance, if it's the subject of the sentence or if it's just the word by itself, typically it, it's in the nominative case. 
and the nominative case will always take dhamma as its vowel marker. So there we have a word that's pronounced un. For instance, for example, take the word bait. Bait means house. To tell us that it's a house, just any house, we pronounce it baiton, baiton. Okay, so we add a double dhamma at the end of the word. And then if we want to say the house, what we have to add is an aleph and a lamb to the beginning of the word. Now what happens to the end of the word, remember now when we talk about a house, we have two vowel markers at the end, baton with two vowel markers. When you add that aleph lamb at the beginning of a word, you're going to take off one of those vowel markers at the end of the word. So it becomes el beitu. El beitu means the house, okay? Beitun, a house, el beitu, the house. Okay, so that's in the nominative case. In the genitive case, which means anything following a preposition, and you don't have to worry about these rules. We'll get these next semester. So I'm just throwing them out there for. Oh, those okay. Who I was like, uh, a little <laughs> bit more <laughs> of an in-depth grammar explanation. Okay, so you don't have to worry about these for right now. Um, the genitive case is used, and it gives the in sound. The in sound. Okay, um, so it's a double kestra that goes below the end of the word, and then the fetha is used in the accusative case. And the accusative case is used for um, direct objects, okay? Um, and there, it's pronounced on, okay? So um, that's something to um, remember. We'll, we'll see those in a few minutes here. Open these up. Okay, and these handouts come from your um, your Gateway to Arabic book. Okay, so we will start with, with Clayton. And I just want you to read through all of the letters um, with the vowel. Okay, you can sing it for us if you'd like, or you can just say them. Start here. You know. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. E. Ooh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Sorry, your mouse is slower than. Oh. Okay. And then ba, b, boo, ta, t, to, tha, thu, thi, or tha, thi, thu. Sorry, I was thinking of the song. Uh. <laughs> Ja, ji, ju, ha, he, who, ha, he, who, da, di, do, um, da, thi, thu, ra, ri, ru, sa, zi, zu. Sa si su sha shu shi shu um sa si er yeah yeah sa si su yeah sa si su good and then da di do ta ti Two. Ta two. Uh huh. Ta two. Good. Ta two. Um. This one just uh, uh, uh er. Uh, 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 e o. O. Ka he hu. Ba fi fu. Um. Ka ki ku. Good. 
Kakiku. Lali Lu. Ma Mi Mu. Na Ni Nu. Ha He Hu. Um, wa we wu, and then ya ye and you. Very good. Okay, at least the same thing. <clears throat> uh, a e o a ba u a e u. Mm -hmm. A e u. Ba bi bu ta te tu ta the thu ja je ju ha he hu. This this one with Kasra can be pronounced sometimes depending on the dialect can be pronounced like with the i sound or the e sound. Um, typically, um, the way it's actually in, in classical Arabic, it's pronounced with an E sound, just, but it's short, okay? So, he, he, and he, okay? Instead of the I sound, but both can be used depending on the dialogue. Okay, start mm -hmm. again from here. Okay. Ha, he, who? Da, de, do. D, do. Da, d, do. So the da also gets the e sound? Yeah, but it's short. Like the, the major difference between the short vowels and the long vowels in Arabic is that um, the long vowel is like twice the length of the short vowel, but it's basically the same sound. But as I mentioned, depending on um, the, the dialect, and there are lots of dialects, um, it's pronounced, and it's not wrong, it's just not, it, there are different ways to pronounce it. Um, so it can be from I to E. Anywhere in between is fine. Okay. Da, the, thu. And Trying to remember vowels versus one way connectors. Okay. Ra, ri, ru. Za, zi, zu. Sa, si, su. Sha, shi, shu. Sa, si, su. Da, de, du. Ta, te, tu. Da, te, tu. A, e, u. Ha, he, hu. Fa, se, fu. Ta, ke, hu. Ta, ke, hu. Ta, ke, hu. It's a ge. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know. I don't know what you're correcting. Yeah. Ha, ha. Like, like the word, like when you say ha, ha. Ta. It's way back in the back of your throat. Ha, ke. I think I am doing that. I don't know if it's coming through. <laughs> ta, ha, ku. Ku, uh-huh. Ka, ke, ku. Good. La, li, lu. Oh, wait, go back to this one. This one is ka, ki, ku. So this one is ka, ka, ka ki, ki, ku. La, Le lu ma me mu 
Ni, I'm sorry, na, ni, nu. Ha, he, hu. Wa, we, wu. Ya, ye, you. Very good. And if we get a little time at the end, we'll, we'll sing that song together. Okay. So your, um, one of your assignments this week will be to read these, these words, okay? There's a, a, an assignment. Um, you want to read it on um, a voice recorder and just um, read all the way across um, word by word, okay? So that will, will, you'll do that as an assignment. Okay, um, here you see an example of Ten ween. Remember, we were talking about ten ween. Ten ween is that double vowel marker. Here you have ten ween feta. And typically, um, at the end of a word, which ten ween will always be at the end of a word, um, when you have ten ween feta, you'll see it written with an aleph at the end. Okay, so that typically stands out for like like I mentioned, it's used as a direct object. So it, you add an extra aleph on the end. And again, it's grammatical, so don't worry about it. But just know that ten ween is, ten ween feta is, um, I'm sorry, yeah, ten ween feta is written above an aleph, okay? So here we have han, han. On this one, san, san. So you're getting that noon sound at the end because of ten ween. Okay, and this is ten ween feta. Um, then we also have ten ween kesra. Ten ween kesra goes below the letter, okay, below the letter. But again, it's a double vowel marker. Remember, kesra is just one slash mark. Ten ween kesra is two slash marks. So we have bin or tin or thin. Hen. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, can you pronounce the uh, Aleph one? Uh huh. In. Oh. In. Okay. Bin. Tin. Thin. Gin. Hen. Hen. Din. Zin. Rin. So you get that new sound because of new nation or ten mean. Okay, and here it's that double vowel marker that goes below the line. Okay, then the other thing we have is ten ten ween dhamma. Okay, so we have un, bun, ton, son, jun, hun, hun, dun, zon. So when you see that double vowel marker. Um, Elise, what does it mean when we have a double vowel marker at the end of a noun? That it's singular? Not that it's singular. Not that it's singular. Clayton, do you remember? What's a double vowel marker mean? Um, I Honestly, I thought it was because it was singular. No, um, it could because it could also be on um, a plural verb, a plural noun. Uh, is it? What it shows see, us, know. the new nation at the end of a word, tells us that it is indefinite, indefinite. So it's the way to say, like for instance, the word for apple is to fa, to fa. Okay, but if you um, add new nation, it's to fahon. To fahon, apples, or to fahaton, an apple, to fahaton. When it's when you have um, a double vowel marker over a tamarbuta, it takes the ta sound. We'll see that in just a minute. Okay, so anytime you have a double vowel marker, it tells us that a word is indefinite. And then aleph lamb tells us that the word is definite. Okay? Okay, so let's look at some words here. Start with this one. Um, Elise, can you tell me what letters you see? Uh, I did. Did you say me? My internet cut out. Cut out. Yeah, Elise. 
Just look at this word it's, and tell me what uh, letters you see. The word is kitab. Uh huh. Just tell me the letters first. And the letters are um, kaf, mm -hmm. ta, mm -hmm. aleph, ba. Good. Okay. And here we have that new nation that I was telling you about, the ten ween. Okay. So here we have calf with Kesra, Ta with Feta, and then an Aleph. We leave a space because Aleph's a one-way connector, and Ba in its isolated form with a double Dhamma telling us that it is an indefinite word, and it's pronounced Kitabun, Kitabun. Kitabun means a book, a book. Okay, kitabun. Okay, um, Clayton, try the next one. Um, What's it start with? Well, a ba. Uh huh. What? Well, give me the letter but first. Like Just not quite letter. that duration. Ba, aleph, and then another ba. Good. Okay, so you have ba with feta, and then an aleph. You leave a space because aleph is a one-way connector, and then you have ba in its isolated position on the line with tenween dhamma, telling us it's indefinite. Okay, so how are you going to pronounce that? Is it baboon? Babun. Babun. Okay. Babun means a door. A door. Babun. Okay. Elise, the next one. Do you want me to say the letters? Say or? the letters first and then try to pronounce it. But say the letters first. Seen, mm -hmm. Aleph, Ein, and Ta Marbuta. Good. Okay. Try and pronounce it. Uh, Um, okay, start with just seen and aleph first. Sa. Sa. And then ein with feta. Uh, I, that, I don't know. Okay, that's a. Ah. So sa. Ah. So that, ta marbuta, what sound does that make? Okay, ta marbuta at the end of the word with new nation, if you're reading it in correct Arabic. Okay, you wouldn't necessarily say this um, just in dialect, but in, in proper Arabic, you pronounce it sa'atun, sa'atun. But if you were just saying the word in dialect, you'd say sa'a, sa'a. So you're getting that extra ton sound from the, the new nation or the ten ween at the end of the word. Okay, sa'atun. Try that, sa'atun. 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 Mm -hmm. Or you can pronounce it sa'a. Sa'a. Sa okay. So that would just be like in regular dialect, you'd say sa'a. But in, in modern standard Arabic with proper grammar, it's pronounced sa'atun. Sa'atun. Okay. So anytime you have a tamarbuta with nunation or tanween written over or below it, um, you, you will pronounce it with that ta sound. Okay, let's try some, some other ones. Let's go to this one. Okay, um, Clayton, what letters do you see? Um, okay, making sure that, that was your mouth, not mine. Um, I see a scene. Mm -hmm. And then, is that a ra? Mm -hmm. Um, two points down. Ara. Satara, satarun. What's this third letter? Tell me what the third letter is. Ta. It's not a ta. Ta is two points up. This is two points down. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. It's a ya. It's 
to ya. Oh, yep. I was never, ever going to get that. Now, just imagine this. When, when Arabic was first, when it first became a language, it was written without dots. So you would see the shape of the scene, and you'd see the shape of the ra. You'd see this little kursi here, just the chair, but no dots. That's all you'd see. And you'd have to know that what that word is. So the dots were put in so that foreigners like us were able to read the language. And they are very helpful. <laughs> okay, so seen, ra, ya, and ra. And then we have that double dhamma at the end. So how would you pronounce this word? Um, sara. Okay, sa. Yarun. And then ra with kesra. Ra oh. kesra makes what sound? Sari. Uh huh. And then you've got it with a ya, yeah, so sari. And then ra with yarun. double dama. Sariarun. 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 So the, the kesra here just enforces the ya here. So sarirun, sarirun, sarirun. Sarirun means a bed, sarirun. Okay, Elise, try the next one. Uh, the letters fa, uh -huh. fa, and lam, and then fiyal. Fa, fa, ya, and lam. You've got kesra down here. Again, it reinforces the ya as a vowel. And then double dhamma. So how are you going to pronounce that? Fialun. Filun. 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 Fil means elephant. Filun. Mm. Okay. We are going to, let's see, let me do that. Okay, I'm going to want to go back to that song, but I want to stop. I'll pause. 